There are many techniques by which fake emulsification is performed. The three most common techniques are divide and conquer, stop and chop, and fake chop. In this video, we're going to be talking about stop and chop. The idea of stop and chop is that after you divide the lens into two heminuclei, you will proceed with the emulsification by chopping the lens into small pieces and eating them. First of all, you need to rotate the lens so that the tip of the phaco probe faces the substance of the nucleus. While you're rotating, you need to direct your second instrument with respect to the spherical nature of the lens capsule, and avoid pushing the lens outwards, as this will stress the lens donules. As soon as the phaco probe is facing the substance of the nucleus, you can start chopping. There are two main methods of chopping, vertical chopping, and horizontal chopping. In order to perform vertical chopping, first you need to hold the nucleus with the phaco probe. Your aim should be directed towards the middle part of the lens, not too shallow, otherwise you'll be holding the epinucleus, and not too deep, as you'll be too close to the posterior capsule. In order to properly hold the nucleus, press the foot pedal to position 3. Once the tip is occluded, and the probe is adequately embedded within the substance of the nucleus, go back to position 2. Now bring your chopper from above and slightly anterior to your phaco probe, and proceed downwards towards the tip of the phaco probe. As soon as the nucleus starts cracking, move your phaco probe to one side and the chopper to the other side. By this maneuver, you will achieve complete separation of the two quadrants. Horizontal chopping, on the other hand, is achieved by holding the nucleus from the middle by the phaco probe and proceeding with the chopper up to the equator. And then you start chopping from the periphery in a horizontal fashion towards the tip of your phaco probe. While performing horizontal chopping, you need to be very careful not to damage the capsule as you are proceeding with the second instrument peripherally. Once you have a free quadrant, you can take that quadrant out of the capsular bag and start emulsifying it. If you are emulsifying outside the bag, try as much as you can to remain in the center and avoid lifting the instruments too much so that you don't come into close contact with the corneal endothelium. If the piece that you have is very big, you can further chop it into smaller pieces, and you may even try to peel it from the epinuclear shell. All these maneuvers will make aspirating the lens much easier. Once you're left with the last piece, the capsular bag is now empty. So it is better to insert the spatula underneath you to protect the posterior capsule from being aspirated. After removing the whole lens, you may be left with a shell of epinucleus. A useful technique to remove it easily is by proceeding with your phaco probe to the opposite edge and start aspirating over there. As soon as you're aspirating, Push the epinucleus by your spatula anterior to the phaco probe. By this maneuver, the epinucleus will flip and you'll easily aspirate it as one piece.